Bob Nagy here, AB5N, with another one of my equipment reviews. This one won't be as long as some of the others. It's uh, about the UV5R5, the new 2015 model of the very famous UV5R Chinese dual band handy talkie. It is a ham radio primarily, but it's also a great survivalist radio and general radio for a lot of uses, being that it is fully opened frequency wise as it comes from Baofeng and uh, can function on a lot of services, which we'll talk about a little bit. I want to talk about the general strength of the UV5R5, and that is excellent case and button positioning. Very easy to operate these buttons and controls. It has a large clear display, and it has multicolored LED backlights that you can change the colors of, indicating the status of the talkie, receive, transmit, etc. It has full PL, that's CCTSS tones, and the digital coded squelch tones. And it also has a radio ID function where you can see who's transmitting because each radio transmits a unique transmitter ID. It has a built-in LED flashlight, which works pretty darn well. It has a consistent mode and a flashing mode. It has a large on and off volume control on the top, which is really something we've sort of lost from a lot of the HTs out there. And you go, my gosh, how do I how do I bring the volume up again and push which buttons and this kind of thing where this one, no question is how to turn this radio on and how to adjust the volume really rapidly. It has an FM radio with decent performance. A lot of the FM radios don't work that well in HTs. This one actually works quite well. And as I said, it is fully open from the factory for TX coverage, and that means it covers uh, GMRS, FRS, a lot of the other frequency bands, itinerant UHF and VHF frequencies. It does cross banding UHF to VHF so you can have a split band repeater kind of setup. And it has good receive sensitivity outside of, of its normal ham radio frequency range. So that means it's, it is actually usable on these other services. Another thing is that it comes with all of the accessories that you could possibly imagine. Normally, HDs come with virtually nothing, but this radio comes with a whole bunch of accessories all built in. Let's take a look at the accessories. Of course, it comes with a nice little manual that is quite well written. A earphone microphone combination that's uh, very much like a cell phone device. Of course, the stock, stock battery pack. The belt clip, which just flew out of here. All normally additional items. And uh, a lanyard and a base charger. Wow, that was always like a you know, $50, $75 item with its matching power supply. It's all in there. I mean, you can't go wrong with that. By the way, the programming cable is not supplied, but they're inexpensive on eBay. It is computer programmable, and you can use the little programming cable and use free software that's available on the Baofeng site and it's very easy to program with the programming software. It is more difficult to program manually, as all radios are. Uh, if you want to learn how to program this, I've done a very extensive programming video, and you can see the link on the screen there. You can pop back to this later after the review and, and go ahead and take a look at how to program this manually if you're not going to use the computer cable. It has excellent transmit audio and receive audio. Uh, a lot of radio, radios might have one or the other, but this thing, the speaker is good in the, in the radio. It, it's quite loud and very clean. It uses a DSP chip in there to clean up the audio and receive. And the transmit audio is certainly just fine. There's, there's nothing lacking in it whatsoever. It's got good bass and, and treble. And its absolute best feature, it is incredibly cheap. Um, these radios are, are very low in price, and coming with all of the, uh, the accessories, that's, that's just amazing. Uh, we're going to talk about the range of this radio because it's one of the prime questions that people ask, well, how far do these things go? For a lot of uh, people that are not an amateur radio, I will discuss that because you, you hams know how far a radio like this will go. It's a 4-watt radio with 1 watt as the low power position and 4 as the high power position. Uh, I have to say that the silicone sleeve, a little sleeve for my other Japanese handy talkie, cost more than this entire radio and all the accessories. Uh, <laughs> uh, that's, that's just amazing. Uh, we hams have been used to paying, oh, in the $300 range, three to $400 for the last 35 years for, for handy talkies just like this. And uh, folks coming into the hobby, 
they'll look at these radios and go, well, I think that's a pretty pretty fair deal, you know, $35 for all the accessories and the radio. I mean, I think, I think that's an okay deal. I might get that. You have no idea what kind of a screaming deal that is. The UV5R has been out for years now and has sold like hotcakes. Why? Because it's a good performing radio with a really nice look to it. It really looks pretty sharp. Uh, a lot of the radios are pretty goofy looking or, you know, they can't find the controls and that kind of thing. This radio is actually just excellent looking. Um, an extra tall battery for this. You get the extra long life battery that snaps onto this. It's really inexpensive. I mean, it's between $14 and $17. 3800 MA extended battery, battery uh, life battery. That thing will run for days and days and days, and it just slips right on, fits right on the back, and bang, you're in business. Valve Hanger has released this UV5R5, the 2015 version, and right away you'll notice that there's a few things that are different. Um, the display looks a little bit different, the, the printing around it. The buttons are a, a lime green, easier to see than the old ones. It feels uh, better in your hand because the case has been modified with smoother edges around there, so they've really taken a look at this radio and, and refined a lot of the little things. You know, several small things will be refined in the radio. and. Uh, one of the things I noticed that they had addressed was that the squelch was fairly weak on the original model and it's been tightened up, which is a good thing on, on this radio. If you're using your PL tones or digitally coded squelch, it's not going to matter because the sound is not, the radio is not going to open up unless you got your PL tone happening and that's, that's always a good uh, thing to do, your PL encode and decode. Now, another instant thing that you see that's changed on this is that the voice enunciator in here, this thing reads everything back to you on the menu, uh, it was changed from a Chinese person speaking English to an English speaking person speaking English. And it sounds like an American woman to me. For example. Menu. ANI code. Confirm. Confirm. So the voice is very understandable and it has two languages, Chinese and English. As well, the price has been reduced. Uh, I think I paid $50 for my first UV5Rs, and that was a killer deal then. It was, it was wow, they're only $50 with all the accessories. They're quite a bit less than that now. Uh, wow. Let's talk about the range on a UV5R, and this would be, you know, pretty much no different from another talkie of this power level. Now, this, this radio is a 4 watt out in high power, 1 watt out in low power, and that is uh, that's a lot for a radio of this size. The lithium batteries are what make that possible. And if you're going to run high power, get the extended life battery. Get a couple of them. They're so cheap. Uh, and then it will hold up to running the higher power. You do need to know, for those who are not amateur radio operators, that the difference between 1 watt and 4 watts is not very great. In other words, if you're not making it on 1 watt, you're not going to be rock solid on 4 watts. If you're blipping in and out, and I almost can hear you, if you if you almost could hear the person, they're just about there. 4 watts will bring it in. But if you're not making it, kicking up to four watts, you're still not going to be making it. It's much more about the antenna and your height above ground. So let's talk about uh, the what you can expect range-wise on this radio. Uh, you can get as little as 300 feet on this radio if you were going from the basement of one house to the basement of another house. That's about all you could do. A house, two houses over, basement to basement was all you could possibly expect. You're going through wet dirt. 300 feet of wet dirt. Radio signals don't go through wet dirt. So that would be the absolute minimum on high power. You'd, you'd have trouble there. Over flat terrain between two of these radios on level terrain with the stock antenna, you could probably expect a mile reliably on low or high power, maybe a mile and a half on high power, as long as there wasn't like a lot of cement in between you or a lot of piles of dirt. Line of sight, you could actually see the guy if there was nothing in between you, a mile and a half or so. But I'm also going to suggest that the stock antenna, like any stock antennas on any HT, are okay, but not great. And you can get an improved antenna, but you will probably need to get the SMA female-to-female -female adapter. These are available on eBay and other places for very, very cheap. Immediately order yourself a couple of these things, because you might end up using other antennas on this radio. And I do highly suggest that you look into a longer extended antenna that gives more gain and more a better reception. If you're talking between two of these on level ground with two of the improved antennas on it, you could, oh, it's almost double that range. So you could be looking at, oh, three miles comfortably between two talkies like that. I can tell you, though, that if I took two of these talkies and went on a mountaintop of any height, let's say a 500 or 1,000 foot small hill or mountain, and I put an external antenna on this, I screwed on a little antenna that was, you know, just about this big, a little two meter beam, and went between two mountaintops, I'm sure I could do 50 miles with four watts. So that shows you that it's very dependent on your elevation above ground, the most critical thing, 
elevation and the quality of the antenna, not the power. Remember megapixels on cameras? I thought more megapixels, better and better. Well, how many megapixels are they going to have now? Well, now, you know, professionals know darn well that over about 10 megapixels, it doesn't matter. It's a lot more about other factors of the camera. And just like that, it's about antenna and elevation on any transmitter to any receiver. So let's say an average condition where you're on a, one guy's on an elevated hilltop. Say you're just up 75 feet at the command center of some race or something like that, and you've got the little improved antenna on there, and the other person is way out there at the end of some race, you know, jogging thing track, and there you could probably get them four miles out without a problem, talkie to talkie. I mean, that's, that's excellent, because the, the receiver and the transmitter are certainly uh, excellent in this. So there's, there's, with a decent antenna, with one person up a little bit, you can expect that kind of range. But again, if you're talking, talking through dirt, subterranean, that kind of stuff, don't expect much range. Now, this is, again, primarily an amateur radio, but then again, most amateur radios are absolutely locked into the amateur radio band, period and it will not transmit out of sight of that area. It is legal to receive everything but cell phone calls on a scanner or radio like this without a license. Once you get into transmitting, then you're talking about licensing, and that is rather serious because the penalties are rather steep, and people do get uh, these penalties occasionally, so you have to be quite careful. Now, the amateur radio bands are one thing you have to avoid if you're not an amateur radio operator. That is 144 to 1. 48 megahertz. Do not go inside of that area and use these radios because hams are excellent at hunting, hunting transmitters. They do it for a hobby all the time. We call it a you know a rabbit hunt or a fox hunt. And in 20 minutes, we'll find we can find you. And believe me, they will go after you, uh, and they'll they'll alert the feds. So you want to stay out of that area. And the other that's the VHF on the UH, UHF band. That would be about. Oh, 430 to 450 in that range, stay out of there. I'd go, you know, I think the band is almost as low as 420, so stay out of 420 to 450. If you look on the uh, internet, you'll find what are called itinerant frequencies, and these are frequencies that are used for businesses and such, unlicensed frequencies, and all the people you see in uh, Walmart and Sam's and Costco are using talkies on these itinerant frequencies. They're not licensed. So this radio functions on those frequencies well, it is technically illegal to use a radio that is not type accepted, they call it, for the service you're operating on, on that service. And that is a technical law and rule and detail that you need to be aware of. Uh, but I, I can't say that commonly these radios, radios such as these, are used on services that they're not designated for. Because this radio is type accepted for amateur radio service. So FRS, GMRS, all those frequencies are published on the internet and you can basically input those with the computer or by hand and this would operate as an FRS radio with the tones and everything else and you could talk to any FR other FRS family radio service radio or GMRS radio including those on <laughs> used in by commercial businesses without a license. That of course makes this an excellent survivalist radio. If you were to get this radio and put a decent antenna on it, that would be a a dual band ham radio VHF UHF base antenna around $100. Stick that up on a little bit of an elevated pole with some good coaxial cable, say LMR 400. I would say do not use anything but it. The short, shortest piece of LMR 400 you can buy, about 75 cents a foot, a decent, about 12 foot, 15 foot high, uh, their white fiberglass base ham radio dual band antenna. Stick that on a pole. Uh, and, and use an adapter to get to the uh, SMA over here because they'll have to put an adapter on the end of the cable. You'll see what, it, what it's like. And then um, you could make this the basis of a survival uh, radio that would cover a long area, a big area, especially if you had any elevation. You can find these Baofengs in a lot of different flavors uh, in a lot of different sources. Uh, but this particular 2015 model, the UV5R5, I got at AGP Tech. Really nice people. The price was great. Uh, and you know, really you're looking for a little bit of backup, like if you had a problem, you need to get it swapped out. You want people you can deal with, and they, they were very nice to me, so I can suggest them. So there you go. Uh, absolutely great ham radio, survivalist radio. You know, you're out in the boat, and you drop it in the lake, and you go, ah, I got some service out of it. You don't have to cry if you feel like you dropped a $400 handy talkie in the lake, and you know that happens. So, and this thing has pretty good splash resistance as it is, so I have no problem. In fact, you know, it'll, of course, listen to uh, channel 16 there, uh, on the lake, the main VHF comm channel out there, perfect for that for a boat emergency radio. And of course it transmits there. So there you go, UV5 R5 Baofeng, dual band handy talkie, 2015 model, excellent radio. See you next time.